discuss some other stuff as well. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I apologise for the lack of uploads recently. I've uh, had a bit of a rough week, and then a really good week um, after that. But yeah, it's uh, unfortunately when the whole family is ill, uh, it's not a very good time. So. But uh, we're all better now. Uh, but um, it uh, really did a number on my throat to the point where whispering was uh, really painful even after I felt better. So uh, hence why I haven't done any videos. But uh, it's starting to feel good now. And uh, I think I should be able to do uh, this video without really feeling much. Uh, soreness. So, let's uh, start by showing you the deck that I'm going to sleeve. Uh, so, these are the sleeves that I'll be using. I uh, always use Dragon Shield. Uh, I personally don't think there is a better, um, better sleeve, in my opinion. I know some people like the Katanas as well, but... Dragon Shield have always done me well, so got some nice red ones for this deck. And uh, we're going to be sleeving this uh, Doctor Who Commander deck. Uh, so this is the Grixis Masters of Evil one. Uh, I've, I've actually ended up buying two Commander decks from this set. Uh, I also brought the uh, the chess guy, uh, I want to say it was called Timey Wimey, which is an awful name, uh, but uh, I really liked the mechanic, and I really liked the mechanic of this one as well. So uh, I managed to, uh, I picked up uh, Timey Wimey at Commander Fest, and then I, uh, I pre-ordered this one. So uh, let's start by getting into the box without... Uh, making too much noise. So, as a disclaimer, this isn't going to be about the actual deck itself. I'm not going to talk through each card. I'm just going to sleeve them and just have a nice ramble about uh, what I've been up to. Even though I 
I uh, I basically paid seventy five uh, English pounds to uh, to go to the event. Um, but with that seventy five pounds, you got the play map that you see here, which is the official play map for the event. Uh, you got a booster pack of Commander Masters, um, which was actually pretty cool because uh, I've not opened any Commander Masters before. Um, so it was cool to actually finally open one. Uh, I think the, the best pull from that pack was Toxic Deluge, which isn't too bad. It's probably going to go in this deck, to be fair, when I upgrade it. I'm, uh, I'm just leaving the deck up as it is for now, because I'm meeting up with friends tomorrow to uh, just to play the decks out of the box and see how they play and then uh, and then after that I'll probably throw in some upgrades like Toxic Deluge and uh, what else did you get for the £75? Uh, you got access to uh, one draft event um, and then you also got some promos as well. So you got a promo uh, reliquary tower, and you uh, you were meant to get a promo arcane signet, um, but they didn't have them. They didn't get delivered in time. So um, we got some other promos instead. Like some of them were from Lord of the Rings um, and. Path of Ancestry as well, which was the promo from last Command Fest as well. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit upset because I wanted that Arcane Signet. Uh, I, need, uh, I need to buy some, to be fair, but um, the other promos were pretty cool as well. But yeah, didn't think £75 was too bad because that also pays for your entry into the event as well. So, the... Uh, the smallest amount you could pay was £40, I think. So, 75 for the mat and the, the um, Commander Masters booster seemed like a pretty good deal to me. I, uh, the, the draft that I chose to do as well was Modern Horizons 2 draft, uh, which was a super fun draft to do. There's a lot, of, um, a lot of valuable cards in that set. And it's quite a powerful set to draft as well. I ended up uh, drafting blue-white artifacts. Um, and uh, I only, unfortunately, I only won one game. But um, it was still a fun, a fun deck to play. Still did well against other decks. I unfortunately didn't open anything of value from that uh, draft. Not really, anyway. I think I got to... I think a Patriarch's Bidding was the most expensive uh, card I opened. Which uh, isn't a lot. But uh, still very fun to, uh, to do. It's not very often you see a Modern Horizons 2 draft anymore. And then... Uh, I also managed to find time to do a Modern Horizons 1 draft as well, which uh, was uh, super fun to do as well. Again, the same sort of reason in the fact that uh, it's a hard set to be able to draft to find someone that has all the cards to draft it, or the boosters even. And uh, the set is full of high value cards, so super fun to do. I did a little bit better in that draft. I uh, drafted the snow archetype, which can essentially be any colours, but I was three, I was a Tamir snow. And I ended up going two and one with that deck. So out of those two events, I managed to do okay, and I won myself some prize tickets, which you can trade in for uh, boosters or uh, 
all, all sorts really. There's, there's a lot to choose from. There was a lot of um, like promo material for the Doctor Who set. Like they had oversized um, magic cards that you could get and foil sheets. So like a full sheet of rares with uh, that were foil that came framed. There was also um, John Avon, the artist for a lot of Magic the Gathering cards. He was there. Uh, he was doing signings and he also donated some stuff to the prize wall as well, which was really cool. You get like John Avon t-shirts and stuff like that. But uh, what I ended up doing with my prize tickets was actually trading them in for sleeves. I managed to get enough tickets to get two boxes of Dragon Shield. Um, one in the nice bright red and one in a nice bright blue which is what my timey wimey uh, deck was sleeved in because after I did those drafts I picked up my copy of timey wimey and me and some friends sat down and played some games of commander and uh, we had a lot of fun there was a there was a bar there so we could get drink and food and stuff as well and uh, yeah, it was a it was a great time to be fair. I um, I haven't been to a magic event since uh, since before the pandemic. I used to go to a lot of the GPs. We used to have two GPs a year in the UK, and we always made an effort to go to both, and they were super fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, it seems Axion now are doing the events and um, they seem to be just as good as the GPs so we had a lot of fun I think there was um, I think there was eight of us in the end that went down from uh, from my uh, hometown and the surrounding areas so we, uh, we took two cars down um, I mean weirdly the event had free parking which I've never heard of before. I have to, we have to pay to park at our local supermarket, but then yet yeah, this magic event was completely free, which is uh, crazy when you think about it. But uh, yeah, we we went down in two cars and we played lots of games. The ones that weren't driving possibly drank a little bit too much. And then we uh, went for a meal afterwards. And uh, we all had a uh, really good time. We're already planning the uh, the next event. So, can't wait to, uh, to do that as well. I did also uh, sell some cards while I was there. I had, uh, I had about four bundle boxes worth of cards to get rid of. They were just all sat there doing nothing. So I uh, traded those in for some credit because there were some cards that I needed for decks um, just to uh, just to finish upgrading some decks really. So the biggest one that I got was a Mutavolt, uh, which cost me uh, I think about forty quid. Uh, might have been a little bit less after the trade-in uh, discount, but um, yeah, I needed that for the colourless Eldrazi deck. It's kind of like the last uh, bit of ramp that I needed for that deck. So that's um, that's all paid for and sorted. There was also a vendor there called a Tokyo MTG which I'd never heard of before. But what they do is they buy Japanese cards and sell them in the UK. And then they'll buy English cards while in the UK and sell them to the Japanese. Which I thought, okay, so they're selling them at a premium then. But actually the Japanese cards were super cheap. I managed to pick up uh, another one of the cards I picked up was a 
uh, foil anime parallel lives because I needed that for Genie Fay. And normally that card in the UK would easily be £40 in English, easily in foil. You probably end up paying about 30 for it in non foil. And the Japanese version was £12. So I thought that was a bit of a no brainer. Pick it up in Japanese because I already know what it does. Everyone knows what Parallel Lives does. And then I've got it for super cheap. Those are all just tokens by the look of it. It's nice to see that they've actually given you a lot of tokens in this deck. Normally they're a bit stingy with them. Uh, right, so I think the next thing I'm missing is the um, sample booster. So I'm just going to try and find that. video.